And Evi Pamporas is also joining us this morning to continue to talk about this. Uh, is it significant that these agents were plain clothed uh, when conducting the raid on Mar-a-Lago? No, it's not significant. FBI agents are actually often plain clothes. They're typically not in uniform. They're not officers per se. They're special agents dressed down and uh, normal attire is appropriate in a situation like this. Now, obviously, we've been talking about the fact, and we just heard from Dre, that the president was not home. Uh, his Secret Service agents would have been with him in New York City. But would there have been any Secret Service agents remaining at Mar-a-Lago with the family? We know uh, his son, his teenage son, Baron, uh, lives there at the residence full time. Yes, absolutely. The, you know, any um, residence, any property that a president has or former president has, when they have protection, there's always a footprint left behind. So there would be agents there. However, the agents cannot impede, they cannot stop. If it's a legal search warrant, which this was, then they must allow the FBI agents access, which they did my understanding. Right. And we've we've received word that they were warned about an hour and a half uh, before the FBI arrived on the property. But the other staff had no idea what was happening. So do you think that's typical? I think that is typical. I think it's typical. You want to execute a search warrant. You, you don't. I know everyone's calling this a raid. It's a search warrant in essence. Right. You have to have probable mm -hmm. cause. You present it to a U.S. magistrate or judge, a neutral party. They give it to you and then it clearly lays out what you're looking for, where you're looking for it, what, you know, what location within the house where you can look for this stuff. So I think it's appropriate. The less people know, the safer it is. You also don't want to have, you know, I think it's actually quite smart of them as far as execution wise to do it when the president's not there. You're going to have less issues, less problems. You want to search the residents thoughtfully and quietly and as we what we're hearing is this is with about a 10 hour right a 10 hour search so it is appropriate wow. you're not going to inform people you don't have to inform the staff but i think what they did informing another law enforcement entity is appropriate but i i want to get back to what you said at the very beginning of your answer here people are calling it a raid but it was the execution of a search warrant do you think the term raid is inflammatory that we're using it uh, out of context it's a search warrant at the end of the day. Now, you want to call it a raid. Some people can, and it does give it a different sense or feel, and it's actually what former President Trump used. But at the end of the day, it is a search warrant. At the end of the day, you do have a legal document. Investigators went to a neutral party, a U.S. magistrate, and said, this is what we have. You cannot get a search warrant without probable cause. I will tell you this much. To get a search warrant of this magnitude is not an easy thing. Also, they probably had a lot more than just probable cause to get it. This probably went through up the echelons and people really thought thoughtfully about this before executing it because of the heat that it's going to bring. It is unprecedented. This is something new. But again, it goes back into violation of the Presidential Records Act, which is that we you cannot remove um, documents, the fear of having these documents destroyed, classified, or top secret. And so that's what's happening here. Do you think that it was, you know, the president, uh, the former president mentioned that a personal safe was searched by these agents. Uh, these, this search was, in essence, looking for these very classified documents, but the fact that they searched personal property versus a office inside of an, you know, a workspace, what's the difference? Is there one? So when you get a search warrant and you go before the U.S. magistrate, you have to spell out what you're looking for. Am I looking for stolen items? Am I looking for documents? As it is in this case. And there also might be electronic documents as well that they were looking for. When you spell that out, that gives you an indication as an investigator where you can look. So if I, if I was looking for a large, a large object, let's say a, a big screen TV, I can't open drawers, I can't look in small places, but if I'm looking for documents, thumb drives, I can look anywhere. And that includes a safe. And it will lay out where within the property are you are going to look, right? Which property you're looking for. So it's really spelled out in the search warrant it, it kind of it curtails what law enforcement can and cannot do so that they don't just have carte blanche and look wherever they want for whatever they want all right Avi pamparas thank you very much uh, had a great conversation with you there thank you thank you for watching go to newsnationnow.com to find news nation on your television provider and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of news nation's fact-driven unbiased coverage